How many times do you guys think you've seen this movie? Oh, goodness. I don't, like... So this came... I made sure to look up when it came out. So it came out in 1997. Uh -huh. So I'm going to expose my age here. People can do the math. So I was 16 when it came out. I remember seeing it in the theaters. I think I saw it in the theaters at least twice. Um, pretty sure on the VHS. Pretty sure I attended multiple slumber parties where we watched this. Who knows? I don't know. And you got to remember... This is like when Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio was like the guy. Yeah. So, and every girl thing growing up in the 90s wanted, you know, preteen, teen, what that he was like their pretend boyfriend. So, oh, wait, was this movie the what really catapulted him into? into or was so, if you're like legit, what really catapulted him was Romeo and Juliet, released in 19, October of 1996, which I made sure to get that date. And then this was December 1997. So it was like, that's what brought him to, I mean, Leo's still around today. He's a oh, yeah. actor. He is an A-lister. He's going to be on the level, he's on the level of a Jack Nicholson. He's, he's, he's our Jack Nicholson of our, of our age group. So, um, and he deserves it after everything is done. But so it was really Romeo and Juliet. I believe that really brought him to like the consciousness. I know what's eating Gilbert Grape is somewhere in the mix there. Mm. And I think this is what put him over the top, I think, for like general um, audiences. Consumption. Yeah, you get bonus points. Yeah. You remember him from Romeo and Juliet, though. So, um, okay. Movie. No wondering. water in it, so no reason to review. I think we'd yeah. have fun. <laughs> we can We can tie that in, but yeah. I think um, for me, I think it, this is what really uh, made me aware of him. You know, and, and and probably a lot of people, because I was I, I don't know how old I was then, but twelve, thirteen, maybe, yeah. And uh, but for for nineteen ninety seven for me was the year of the Fifth Element, so I've seen that movie. I can't even count that many times. So, <laughs> but this one, I've only seen uh, exactly twice, and just finished the second viewing. Uh, the first time was right after we had. Uh, our son I was up late doing something and I was probably too tired to turn the channel and so just sat there for four and a half hours and you know let it let it play and I was like this is actually pretty good yeah because um, it was like a popular movie to make fun of with mm -hmm. uh you know boys my age back then it was you know but so I was like yeah this is this is pretty good and Gilbert how many times do you think you've seen it not as many as Michelle, um, <laughs> but more than you, John Michael. Um, I remember having it. We had like, it was like this big box and it was two VHS because of course the movie couldn't fit on just one. So I remember that like in the closet with the other movies, but it's not something that got busted out often because it was such a long movie. So I know it, I know it kind of well, um, but like, like you said, like seeing it again, and being like actively focusing like okay let's watch this movie and they're like little things that come up or things that people would say and i guess now that i'm older i'm like oh wow like that was really mean and what a dig mom thanks <laughs> um there's it was just good little nuancey things yeah um, does it, what does it clock in at four hours what is it or almost four? Oh, it's uh actually that that brings up a good point because i i was wondering i had a theory before I watched it today that all of James Cameron's movies uh, get longer and longer as it goes. And so I wrote down all of his movies. And so let's just start at the beginning of uh, Piranha 2, The Spawning was his first movie. And that clocks in at 94 minutes, a breezy 94 minutes. Yeah. Then Terminator was 107. And then Aliens, which is one of my favorite movies, is 137 minutes. Then The Abyss is 140. So they're going up just like my theory. Now, Terminator 2 is what screws it up because it goes down to 137. And then True Lies is back up to 141. And Titanic is 194 minutes. And then Avatar, which is his most recent movie from 2009, is 162 minutes. So whatever 194 minutes is in hours, that's how long it is. Uh, you know what? I just looked it up. It's three hours and about 30 minutes. So. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. For some reason, I thought it clocked in at a solid four, but yeah. yeah. With commercials, it's four and a half. So yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's a good point. Three, that's 330 <laughs> straight. So. I could not imagine with commercials. Like, right? No. <laughs> I mean, How I like did we never put up with that? <laughs> I literally, like, literally don't even have TV now because it's just, I'm just going to stream this. And if it's commercials like on Hulu or whatever, I'm like, I'm not going to watch that. That's fine. Just tell me about it. <laughs> I uh, looked up the trivia. I was looking through some of the trivia on IMDb for the movie. And I really like this one that says that all the collective scenes, the story set in the past in uh, 1914, runs a total length of two hours and 42 minutes, which is the exact length that it took the Titanic to sink. Uh -oh. The collision scene of like actually hitting the uh, iceberg last 37 seconds which is also the reported length of the actual collision that was like oh, oh that's, that's super nerdy mm, that's pretty cool James Cameron. purposeful yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i just love that somebody researched that we're just like oh wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> he does seem if anybody was going to do that he does seem like the type that that would yeah for sure um because sure. didn't he actually go down in one of those submersibles and like look at it like i think he i think he did yeah. That like so many right. times, yeah. I, another trivia thing that said that he did it so many times to like go down and immerse himself in the scenery and being around it that he actually spent more time with the Titanic than the people on the Titanic. <laughs> wow. There's no book for me to read and talk about, so I got. I was like, I gotta get facts. <laughs> <laughs> I think the run times were the only thing I looked up, but I did. I was wondering. I was like is this, because I knew it happened pretty fast, and I was like, is this the right amount of time of the sinking? So yeah, that's pretty cool. I noticed a couple of uh, connections to some of my other favorite movies. I just want to just mention those briefly. Uh, James Cameron's other movie, Aliens, is one of my favorite movies of all time. And um, so is his other movie, Terminator 2. Uh, and Jeanette Goldstein, the lady who plays the Irish mom with the kids, and she realizes that they're not going to let them on the, on the lifeboats. Uh, she's in Aliens. She plays uh, Vasquez with the really big gun. And um, have you guys seen Aliens? Yes, of course. Yeah. Vasquez so, is on. I totally, how did I, I'm, I'm rewinding. Well, she doesn't look anything like it, and I never would have known. Um, yeah, I was going to feel but, like, I feel like I know her face immediately. Well, in, in Aliens, she's playing, you know, Vasquez, a very short, short-haired woman. Yeah. In this movie, she's Irish, and they painted a bunch of freckles on her and put, like, okay. this curly wig on her. I was like, you know, she's Latina. How does she go from Latina to Irish? You got it. The magic yeah. of makeup, but still. Can you guys hear that? He wants to offer his opinion on Titanic. Yeah, he's trying to get in here. He's probably about the same age that I was when I first saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I was in fourth grade, I forgot to mention. Oh, like, nice. Oh, wow. You were like 10, 10 or 11. Um, uh, but the other Aliens connection, sorry, is Bill Paxton. And in, uh, yes. in Aliens, Bill Paxton asks Jeanette Goldstein, he says, hey, He's trying to bust in here. He says, hey, hey, Vasquez, have you ever been mistaken for a man? And she says, no, have you? And it's like one of the greatest lines in the movie. It's a great Dang. line. Yeah. And so Bill Paxton's also in this. He's the, you know. And Bill guy. Paxton is from Fort Worth. Oh, yeah, that's right. Connection. So, yeah, cool. look at that. Full circle. So. Yeah. He's, I think he's probably the only part of the movie that made me roll my eyes and feel a little bit dated. Like their conversations is like dudes on this shit, yeah. and just like being all poetic and I'm like, oh my god, just <laughs> yeah, just get what you yeah. need from the book, please. <laughs> yeah, there was some kind of squeamish eye rolly. Yeah, but right at the beginning. The whole, on the whole, though, I really thought like I don't know about you guys. But I've gone back and rewatched some movies that I liked when I was like teen or something, and some of them are horrifying. Like. One, how did this movie get made? Two, how did I like this? Oh, there's there examples. Yeah. Um, and this one, I, I honestly, I kind of expected to be super annoyed by this movie. Um, but I was curious and I wasn't at all. I mean, I, they're yeah. like, okay, you know what? This, There's some cheese. Um, it's, it holds up. 
but <laughs> yeah, really like it does hold up like i'm like no this is a pretty good yeah it's not that bad it wasn't that i don't feel like it's kind of one of those like i was like oh am i embarrassed that i saw it so many times when i was a teen and when i rewatched it i was like you know what no i'm not embarrassed that's a that was a legit move movie yeah it's so, not, it's not bad. having having Growing up and being being a little bit older now and watching it, I felt like I understood a little bit more about the emotion and what she's going through. Because her as a teen, like me watching it so young, that wasn't something I was like, why is she on the edge of the boat? Why is she upset? What about like, she's rich? Why is she, why is she upset? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and now I'm like, oh girl, I get it. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think that wow. the first time I watched, I think I totally missed that her family had run out of money. And so that's why she had to marry Billy Zane. Uh, yeah. I think I missed that too. So She's this time was getting married off. Yeah, mm-hmm. she, uh, yeah, she had to. And the mom has this really guilt ridden moment and um, which like I hated her character. I mean, she was such a good hateable character because she was just ruthless. But she mm-hmm. like does this guilt thing where she's like, oh, you're going to make me have to go be a seamstress. And she turns around and she's like, <laughs> to, to make Rose feel bad, like that guilt from mother to daughter, right? But then- yeah. um, Rose says something like this isn't fair and she turns around and she's like yeah being a woman isn't fair like life is hard yeah I was like "Ooh, these are some deep stuff with yeah this This did not go well let let me just tell you Michelle's 16 year old brain did not grasp all of that but as an adult I was like yeah there's some truth spitting in here like wow Uh, Michelle can 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 I just ask what were the uh, movies you went back that you liked and you went back and watched and you were embarrassed about? Oh, so many. Like American Pie. And- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know why I was yeah. expecting it. I think I was trying to be like, you were better than that, Michelle. Like you, and then I saw it and I was like. No. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm so disappointed in you, Michelle. I'm so disappointed in you. So yeah, that whole like era, I think that's when I got, that was like when I was like a senior, so a little bit older and I'm just, I'm so glad, like, I don't know what the young kids are doing this day, so maybe they got their equivalent, but so gross, so blah. Um, so this one I actually feel is legit. Um, yeah, those I was disappointed and even there's some a little bit in my early twenties that I've gone back and watched and I'm, or like, I thought they were good. I wouldn't say I was obsessed with them or anything, but I'm like, oh, that's a, that's funny. That's funny. And I'm like, no, it's really stupid. But, you know, you live and you learn. Yeah. This movie was such a cultural phenomenon, right? Like, it was just such a big part of that time and age, and the music, like, was everywhere forever. Yes, um, the Celine Dion song. Yeah, nice. I didn't know who she was until this movie, and then, yeah. then she was just, like, an American diva, just like everyone else. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, like, like like you said, it, it's something that I, I also expected to watch it and feel cringy or roll my eyes at a lot of moments. And it wasn't it wasn't like, oh, cheesy 16 year old, you know, heartthrobbish kind of movie. Like, no, it was it was a good film to watch. Yeah, it was a um, sol- it was a solid movie. Lots of star notice. power, too. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. A lot of star power. No, I was going to say I noticed, too, because I was on the lookout because, you know, that song was like the song forever. I felt like. Um, and they weaved it a lot in the background, mm-hmm. a lot of scenes. Because again, I was hyper. The little I was like, when did we play parts. that song? Yeah. yeah. So I love that. And pay films. attention to it. Yeah, and it's yeah. quite in a, quite a few spots. It just didn't in, mm-hmm. in the background. Like but the again, first time I he had sees my ears her for it. across huh? the boat. The first time he sees her across the boat, they put in that mm-hmm. loop part. And then um, I was gonna say about the music. Um, you know, I knew that it was that Celine Dion song because, you know, yeah, you couldn't get away from it in this in this country. You couldn't get away from it. And, uh, but just hearing the instrumental, it's like a really nice little like tune. And it's, it's not like, like little, yeah. Yeah. But that part with the, with just the flute, like the uh, very like sentimental flutes or whatever, reminded me of the Lord of the Rings. And um, so I'm just getting a lot of, it's like a nice, like, big Lord of the Rings fan. So it was um, good to hear. And then all that Irish music when they're in the bottom of the boat dance. Super fun, right? Lord of the Ringsy, yeah. Like that, now yeah. at this age, I'm just like, oh, I want to go and I would not be participating, but I would totally be a wallflower <laughs> and just like enjoying and people watching and like love the ambiance. <laughs> yeah, um, it was good. Yeah. But yeah, I lots of, not lots a big of... music. No, like, no, I don't notice music so much during films unless it's some big climactic moment. But I tend to 
like go back later and be like, oh yeah, someone was talking about the music for this and let me go actively listen to it now after the fact. Um, so that, I guess that was this and some other movies where you take a well-known theme and kind of weave it in throughout the film. I would not have all, like not at all have noticed yeah. that the first time, yeah. but knowing it now, it's like, oh, look, it's everywhere. Yeah, like I'm really way. bad at, at noticing that. I listen to a lot of podcasts about movies and they're this one in particular, they're always talking about the musical themes and I just never, ever notice. It's just like, yeah. So I, It has to be big for me to hit. Like, I'm like, oh, I am aware of this. Yeah. Um, and the first movie that comes to mind is Inception. Like, I love Inception and the soundtrack. And so... Another Leonardo like, DiCaprio. Eh? Right? So, like, that one stuck out. But otherwise, I'm just like, was the music good? No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Sure. Um, I'm in the same boat. It, it, I mean, clearly it helps create a mood and, and that, but yeah, it doesn't, unless it's really integral, um, it normally kind of fades in the background. This one I was all over, so. I have one more um, connection from this movie. It's another Bill Paxton connection. <laughs> he, uh, him and Billy Zane are both in another one of my favorite movies, Tombstone. And um Billy Zane in Tombstone plays this uh, this traveling actor, and he's very like grandiose and like over the top, like he's doing like Shakespeare stuff. And he kind of has like the same accent in this movie because Billy Zane is American, but they're always making him play these British guys, and he always has like these, I don't know, over the top. He's always talking about honor in Tombstone and in uh, in this movie. So anyway, but I do have a question. Um, I have terrible wig dar, but I could not stop looking at Billy Zane's hairline. And is he wearing a wig in this movie? I didn't. Okay, so I usually pay attention to stuff like that. Yeah. But I did not notice because I was so distracted by Leonardo DiCaprio's perfect 90s hair. I mean, that is quintessential. Classically 90s. Heartthrob hair. <laughs> And um, in fact, I saw it again and I was like, um, I'm going to cut my son's hair. Like, which <laughs> might seem really weird. No. But I was like, that was such a cute little hairstyle and the hair goes over the eye. And it's just so, I'm like, that is just, it's so adorable. So I was distracted by the beauty of Leo's hair and I didn't really pay attention to um, Billy Zane's hair. Literally He's, anyone else. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. He still pulls it off. It looks good on him. Yeah, it really does. I mean, he, like I said, he was everybody's like 90s boyfriend. So girls that I knew, at least. Yeah. Well, like, I guess I can't speak. Well, I guess I could look it up because uh, in in uh, Tombstone, Billy Zane's 100% wearing a wig. And when you see him, because it's like this curly, like almost like 80s hair metal, like curl, like <laughs> puffed up in Tombstone. But in the, you see him in uh, Zoolander for like one scene and he's got like very close cropped hair, almost like, I don't know, Vin Diesel or something. Like he looks like he's bald and he shaved it on purpose. So I'm wondering, mm -hmm. is all the hair in his movies wigs? Are they always putting we, wigs? I don't know. Never know. So, something to think about. <laughs> something to contemplate before you're going to bed. There was a previous <laughs> podcast where you, I remember you mentioning like hairlines or wigs or something or that it being something that you really like hone in on <laughs> i was like well, oh, I, I would have never thought about it i'm not good at uh i'm not good at telling whether or not somebody's wearing a wig um but i if if something looks off if it's a bad wig and it looks off then it's totally distracting but i can't look at somebody and say oh that's a wig or that's a that's an extension or something i have to ask my wife also i think the wig game like lately it's, it's excellent. Like, I mean, it's like flawless now, but I think back then mm. it, they were still figuring some stuff out, especially yeah. lace fronts and stuff. Um, also, I don't know too, because we all now have like high def TVs. Because mm. oh, yeah. I watched mine through Prime, which I should have checked if it was high def, but I think we can see a lot more. There was something I was watching the other day and it was like older and now it's in high def. And like people did not look good. Like they clearly made the makeup and, and hair for when things were a little bit fuzzier and, and like. And that was the technology. Yeah. And hey, yeah. I'm just 
trying to be, I'm being a critic here. You know, I don't want my, to see my face either in high def. You know what I mean? But it, it was, it was just very obvious that like things have changed and they, it, we can see a lot more and it looks, yeah. you can pick up on things like hairlines. If, if it wasn't as crisp as it is today, it's easier to catch those little flaws and stuff and consistencies. So, yeah. I mean, this is, was such a, not cult classic, such a big, like, just, yeah, part of the whole American zeitgeist at the time that I'm sure there's people that still talk about it and blogs and all kinds of stuff. So it's sure. like, there's probably a blog dedicated to it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I could find out. <laughs> I could find out for sure if that's a Billy Zang wig. But um, I'm just fascinated with you guys, like, attention to detail because I am not like that. Like I am very focused on like the people and their relationships. But if you ask me what literally any of them were wearing at one point, I'm going to be like, well, she wore a dress and I think one of them was dark and I think it had some red in it, <laughs> you know, but I don't, I don't pick up on things or, like that. Like obviously yeah. he was wearing like a poor guy's clothing and then all of a sudden yeah. he's wearing a tux, you know, which by the way, <laughs> Kathy Bates. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like need I she's, say more? I love her. Yeah, yeah. she's, she's just, great. I forgot she was in this. She's always great. Yeah, like you said, yeah. a lot of star power. No, I forgot some of these people were in there. <laughs> Even yeah, the, when Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was in there. Anybody catch that? Who? The scientist from Secret of the Ooze. Sorry, I've seen that who? movie a million times. Anyway, who is he in this movie? Go off on this tangent. Uh, he has a very distinctive voice, and I immediately was like, "That's the scientist from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles." So. Who was it? But who does he play in this? He's like Billy Zane's little henchman. He's the one that plants the... Oh, okay. Yeah, he's in a bunch of stuff. I don't know his name, but... Yeah. yeah let have a distinctive voice. Yeah. Um, yeah, as soon, but yeah, as soon as I saw Kathy Bates, or I guess I heard her before I saw her, I was like, oh, this bumped it up for me because <laughs> um, I love her in everything she's ever been in. She's from Tennessee, so she's a big... Um, yeah, very... Home, home state pride. Yeah, but um, yeah, Misery and uh, I mean, anything that she's in. I can't think of another movie that she's in right now, but she's in yeah. so many. Um, uh, let's see. I, well, talking about home, hometown Tennessee, um, I think I told, mentioned to you guys before that I had, I think before I ever saw this, I went to the Titanic Museum in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Uh, yeah. on our trip to Dollywood a couple years ago. And it's, I didn't say this, Michelle? I don't think so. The, don't the museum is, is shaped like a miniature Titanic. So it's got the iceberg, cool. it's got the Titanic, and then you go inside of it. And um, there's a couple of cool things that I remember that I wrote down. So one of the things is there's a whole room that's like a walk-in refrigerator with, um, it's like your... I think it's like you're on the side of the boat and so you can see it's dark and there's it's like stars and you can see the iceberg and it's got a, like a little like trough of water with the temperature or the water is at the temperature that the people uh experienced and so you put your hand in and How cool. it, it, yeah it's pretty neat it really brings it home and uh the the other cool thing that I remember was um you're sort of down in the at the bottom like you're looking at what all the different um uh what do they call it like the cabins or the rooms or the boilers yeah the cabins but like the different what are they called do they call it classes of the mm -hmm. classes I think so. suites or whatever and so you're down and you're looking at the bunks and then you're looking at like the first class cabins or whatever and um you're looking at like people's personal stuff i think it was like all replicas um but there's uh at the end of a hallway there's this there's this door this doorway that's covered in glass and it kind of cycles through where you'll see it's just nor it's a normal stairway and you can't go in because it's glass but you can look up into the right and the stairs are going up and um then you start hearing uh like people panicking noises and you start hearing like creaking noises and then water starts pouring down the stairs like a waterfall and it, what? it fills up and it's and like light the lights are blinking and it's like really creepy and and uh really cool um 
but I couldn't help thinking about all the mold that's got to be in that little, in that little <laughs> room. Um, like, I hope they clean this out with bleach regularly. Yeah, I hope it's heavily chlorinated. Um, and then the, the, the staircase where he gives her a note and says to meet him at the clock, and then at the end, when they meet at the stairs again, uh, they did a replica of that same staircase, and it looks just like it does in the movie at this museum. So it must have been like based on whatever the pictures or something. Yeah, for research. So, you know, it's a pretty cool museum, you know, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. That so, sounds yeah. horrible for me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm a very I don't know like sensitive, empathetic, and I. Like, if you make it too real, like, I'm going to be immersed and I'm going to be mm -hmm. sitting there like, oh, my God, thousands of people died. And this is what it was like. I need to get out of here. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm empathizing too hard. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. Yeah, very. It definitely. Um, yeah, it made you empathize and definitely made it feel real. Um, like, when was this? 1912? I think so. So that was, you know, you know quite a while ago. 14, something like that. Yeah. I also wanted to point out that when they're up, like right after they've met and they're up on the deck walking around and just talking like for the first real time and he's got his portfolio of drawings and he shows her the drawings and they're not very good. <laughs> and they get a good artist to do the drawings that he's going to show her. You know what I'm saying? They're just like very. Uh, so you got the artist eye to a non-artist. <laughs> I thought they were fine. Yeah. It was realistically not great, right? Like, if, like he said, he went to Paris and couldn't make it there as an artist. I was like, well, yeah, oh, okay. your, your drawings are like <laughs> better than mine, like, I can, but not yeah. like Paris good. <laughs> 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 I really so that that's another thing that came, I'm just gonna throw out trivia now. Um, it mentioned that that most of that scene was ad libbed, and that oh, James Cameron oh, wow. told them to like y'all go just do your thing, and that they kept it because it was so good and so natural. Like they're kind of awkward fumbling. That yeah, it was most mostly ad lib. Wow. Well, they say they're like good friends to this day, apparently. So apparently, they really bonded over this movie. I get, you know, they, I think they were similar in age, and they were both. Mm -hmm. up, I mean, and it also launched her career as well. So, but you know, I feel like that that there was a very natural, like it wasn't awkward. It wasn't no, you know, Hayden Christensen and I can't say his last name and Natalie Portman and Star Wars. You know, the redone like <laughs> totally awkward, no chemistry at all you know almost yeah the, this love story compared to the star wars prequel love stories is don't like, believe it at all yeah no it's it's terrible yeah this you totally believe like totally believe yeah and they're it both like mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no yeah no i just want to talk about star wars Did you guys see my star wars shirt <laughs> no oh is that from disney yeah it's uh Fun. it's got a little it's got an ewok no yeah. And then on the back, it says uh, Andor. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was good. Oh, I do want to express back to Titanic. <laughs> um, water. Water's everywhere. And um, obviously, because we're in the ocean, duh. But you know what I also thought about, too? Like, which this may, seem, may have seemed obvious to you, but um, like an iceberg is water, right? Just frozen mm -hmm. water. So it was just a water, and then water was everywhere in this movie. Granted, we deal mostly with fresh water here in the Fort Worth Water Department. But that's that's a really good point because the biggest villain of the movie, besides Billy Zane, <laughs> probably water. Because yeah. uh, water didn't do anything wrong. I'm just gonna say <laughs> water was just there. They crashed into it. <laughs> right. The, it was just sitting there not doing anything. So, I am really concerned. Like, why did they not see it? Like, so they talk about there was this there's an inter that interaction between the, the two guys, Mr. Anderson. We talked Andrews. about the flat water that it's hard to see, but right. I is like, Mr. Andrews and then the other guy. And the other guy, I didn't get what his thing was. Was he an engineer? Was he just funding it? I don't know. Yeah, but he was the one know. that like wanted to get headlines. Of oh, the engines going. Yeah, he wanted yeah, all the like, engines to go. Everything. Make it go fast. And they're like, no, 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 because then we can't see things in time. So I guess it wasn't about not seeing it. It's that, that they would see it and not have enough time at the speed they were going to be able to avoid it. 
um, which like then he's the one that ended up on one of the lifeboats and people were like, mm-hmm, I see you. <laughs> but the engineer went down with the ship, right? Because he was he was so like morally tied to it. Yeah. And I agree with like Gilbert, like I um so I was obsessed too. I know they they said it, but I wanted to see like how long it I Googled how long it took, which was two hours and 40 something minutes. Um, so I find that terrifying. Like, I think I had a little too much coffee this morning, but so she normally makes me a little anxious, which I don't need any help with. And I was like sitting there like, oh my God, this is terrifying. And yeah, like I, like I was getting heart palpitations almost. Like I was starting to get like really like hot and flustered. Just the thought of knowing that, you know, and then the, the calm, the stillness when the people have the life vests on and, but they're still like the first class people. Cause the, you know, the third class people know something is wrong cause their stuff's starting to flood, right? Like they're walking through water. Like we're grabbing life vests. We're trying to get up to the top. Like it's very obvious something's urgent while the first class people are still in their little snazzy, whatever cafeteria lobby and they got them on and they're like, why, why do we, was this even necessary? This is kind of ridiculous. And, and they're like, oh, I'm going to have tea after all this little silliness is done. And there's just like, no, like, there's no awareness. Yes. It, it was such a, it was such a jarring thing to see now at this age and see how nothing has changed from a classist point of point of view where you know like the the ones that were below decks and everything were just like there was no conversations it was just like oh no we don't want to worry them they were just like pounding on the doors hey get your life vests on and throwing them at people's faces and then just kind of yeah. running off and people were like what's going on and then at yeah. a certain point actually locking them in and keeping them and not opening them up because they were like no there's no space for you mm-hmm. right and what is it that they they were sending out the the rafts with even up to 12 people when they could see or hold like what was it 50 or up there or they were they practiced yeah. with 70 men or something like yeah. that yeah why yeah, did what they, was why that they did they that? ever come to explain that why they were doing that oh was that okay. it was a total classes thing because like well i don't want to yeah. sit with poor people like this is uh, this is cool. for me only please yeah and so it was such a like angering thing to see now that i totally wouldn't have picked up on that you know as as sensitive like i yeah. wouldn't have been as sensitive to it as a, a younger person and this might have, this might sound also crazy too, but it kind of reminded me a little bit of what we've just gone through with the pandemic, because now it really seems like we're really on a downturn. Everything's fine. I've got my two vaccines, you know, my shots. Yeah. So then or what's just, the problem? Just like you know, life is life is like life kept going, right? And it, but at the same time, it's like things are different, and you know that out there things aren't great. But yet, you know, I, I don't know, like, yeah, just the disassociation felt a little close to home with just going through the pandemic, especially the early days when it was like, is this real? Like, are, did they really just call off school after spring break? Like, are we really packing up our laptops and being told not to come into work on Monday or, or you know, log in, like, don't physically come to work? Like, is there really being a run on toilet paper and like I had a really hard time reckoning with like the reality and so that feeling of like not processing which I felt like the captain kind of showed not processing he froze yeah he was just like nope nope can't handle it like I felt really connected to that I'm like I know again not in that scenario but feel felt like oh I've had a taste of that feeling of like things are going going wrong and it's kind of slow-mo hard disassociation oh yeah i'm like i still feel uncomfortable like thinking about it it makes me like oh i don't want to feel that way i i definitely connected with uh mr andrews there was that specific moment where like it's bad water's coming in and then they're still talking about like oh we're gonna have our just little thing over here on the side and he was just kind of walking through and seeing how horrible it was over here and then how like totally awkwardly chill and he's walking around like what is wrong with all of you like no one is panicking no one is running like don't we all know what's going on and everyone's like we'll be fine we'll be fine i got money um yeah it was good (laughs) A lot of layers there. It held up. Lots of water. Um, it was, 
it was a pleasant surprise that it that it held up as good as it did so mm -hmm. I'm, I wasn't mad. At, I think this might have been one of the first movies in a while that, oh, no, 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 our last movie, um, The Shape of Water, um, that I was like, because sometimes the other movies, I was like, oh. I have to watch this. Yes. And I started out that way with this. And then I was like, oh, pleasantly surprised. This is, this is held up. So. <laughs> yeah. Anytime like something is, something in my mind is like an assignment, even it's one that, one that I came up with. I'm like, oh, geez, I don't know. I don't have time. Uh, let me let me push this off as much as possible. And yeah, it's I don't know what's wrong with my brain. You're, I mean, you're the Scott is that, Michelle, right? I do, I do the same thing. Is that an INFP thing? I think so. Are you, be. What, Gilbert, what's your... Yeah, Gilbert, what are, what's... You know? I'm ENFP. Okay, oh, I thought so. So you're maybe similar. That's, maybe that's why me and you notice details, Michelle, too. Maybe it's got Maybe. something. Yeah, I don't know. But we're all very similar then. We're very similar. Um, John yeah. Michael and I sometimes fight because he is more of an introvert than mine. He tries to, to claim that I'm not a true introvert. But um, I, I would, on, the, on the list, I am solidly introvert, but I'm like at a 40%. John Michael, you're what, like in the 10% range? Like you're way super <laughs> introvert. I'm not like Rain Man. <laughs> <laughs> I uh Close. yeah as a water movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey now. <laughs> but either yeah, way, that's know. a good that's a good point. That's interesting that we're all we're close in the mm -hmm. and the thing I do the same thing John Michael like even if it's something I want to do if you tell me I need to do it suddenly mm -hmm. a rebel without a cause and don't want yeah, to Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, exactly. It's so dumb. Even if it's something that I want to do like if I if I make a plan and I'm like okay, this is what I like um uh, tomorrow, uh, what's tomorrow, Saturday, tomorrow, I want to go fishing because I'm about to go to a cabin with some friends, uh, next week and we're going to be fishing. And it's like, but, and there's a little pond in our, uh, what's it called? Cabin. Neighborhood, whatever. And so I'm like, I'm going to go fishing, but I'll bet tomorrow I'm going to be like, I won't do that. <laughs> that made it a plan. It's just, yeah, I can't even explain it. Yeah, but, um, makes no sense. I, I like what you said about kind of thinking about water as a theme throughout the film. And I like that, like you, like I wrote down specifically, I was just like, it's this thing that she always has with her. Like when she first, as an older woman, she gets, she joins them on the expedition. And which by the way, she, they see her, her drawing on the news and the news like the sketch was in the nude and I was like what what news yeah why was that okay <laughs> <laughs> no one thought to like blur that out I was like this is not realistic it's already shattering the film <laughs> the, inner, the illusion for me but uh, she she shows up there and she's getting out and she's got all these things and she's got her dogs like there's this little one and then a big dog and then a fishbowl and my immediate reaction was like, woman, why? <laughs> but but I liked that it was, I, I was like, no, no, no. Okay, think about it thematically. She has water with her. You know, she's carrying it with her. And then the whole thing was a boat, of course. But I just, I thought of it that way. And it went from this thing that's like harmless, you know, with her fish. But then, you know, towards the end of the movie, it's it turns into a horror film. It's no longer nice. about the budding relationship. It completely changed into a horror flick where people are dying and running and screaming and the walls are caving in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It gets pretty ghoul pretty ghoulish too with all these yeah. frozen bodies and um I always I cringe at like being cut in half and there's so that there's those scenes in the boilers where people are like running and like going underneath uh, the doors and I'm like, oh his legs. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'm really glad glad you made that connection because I remember I'm like, why did the camera kind of linger on the fishbowl? Like what was that about? And so now that makes sense. You know what I also like that they did too, which was when, you know, they bring her. So I actually, I remember the Jack and Rose story, like almost perfectly. Clearly I've practically committed the whole thing to memory. Um, but I, I forgot the first chunk with Bill Paxton going in and, and them trying to find the jewel. I remember the jewel was a big thing and she threw it in, but I forgot that there was an expedition just to find that, all that jazz. So I clearly like- well, like the first 15 20 minutes it seems like every all the characters on that boat are just insufferable <laughs> um, like so it doesn't it makes sense that you would forget it so it makes sense that i would block it out yeah 
um i uh oh no they I didn't believe her like they were kind of jerky about it right where she was just like oh uh-huh. yeah like that's yes. me and you're drawing and the other guy was just like come on she's a crazy old lady she doesn't know anything she'd have to be a hundred and something and he's like yeah she's turning 101 like next week or something yeah yeah it was kind of jerky which I, i'm guessing mm-hmm. nobody, obviously right nobody's still alive from that they'd they'd have to be exactly 100 years old and they wouldn't remember it right so i i i it, they'd be, have to be 110 right 100 oh oh my god y'all i was sitting here thinking it was like 2020 don't <laughs> I don't even know what's going on. The 20, 90s, I've told you, I think I've said it before, I swear to God, the 90s were 10 years ago, the 80s were 20 <laughs> years ago, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> um, it's so weird, like, as you get older and, like, you, you know, I remember, like, being around, like, like people my age now and then be like, why are they so, like, weird and disassociated with time? And then now I'm their age and I'm like, that's what that was about. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, so when I'm 60, like my mind's going to totally be mind blown. And then when I'm 80, like, it's going to be like, what is, what is this? What is time? <laughs> what is time? Like, yeah. Um, um, oh, I oh, 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 what I was trying to get to was, so when they, when they had her on the ship and then they showed her a digital representation of how the ship sank and you know it was very like kind of cold it was like oh look and you know the iceberg hit here and then it cracked in half and then this went down and then this was going to linger for an hour or whatever and then and then as this went into the ocean it skidded another mile out and I liked how you know that was kind of very like mathematical and it was like look at our cool model you know this is how we were able to find it and and all this stuff and she was kind of like you know like there were people on there like that's real to me like it's a it's a model simulation to you yeah you're fascinated on how long it's it stood up but like i remember i saw the people clinging on to dear life and sliding down into the ocean like being there felt different than what yeah and it was like like, yeah it's a model to you but i remember those faces and those peoples and those you know, when they're down there in the little, the shaped doors and she kind of like, they're all, you know, cover it in coral now or something. And, and, and she's like, I remember the, the maitre d's or whatever, like opening them up. Like, and so I just thought that was really cool too, how it was like to them, it's disassociated. It's a model. It's an object. It's a thing that happened in the past. Yeah. And to her, it was real. And she's like, there were real people there. Those were lives that were ruined people who drowned it was horrific and so I thought I don't know why that like really um struck me as well like a cool moment that I don't know don't remember and I don't think it hit me at all when I was watching this as a teenager that's the other thing about those those people on the boat is that they're just straight up treasure hunters they're not interested in like Mm -hmm. historical value or like the educational value or anything they're just trying to find this big necklace so they can get paid and uh Yeah. yeah That's that's why they they seem a little bit uh, jerky. Bill yeah. Paxton with his little with his little hoop rings. <laughs> why did that? And I like I don't know why that stood out so much to me because I have earrings. People wear earrings all the time, but something about him and the way that it was just shot and I could just see right? that big golden loop and I was just like, oh my god! Like I would have hated <laughs> listening to you. Same Alex. thing here. Like I'm like I dudes that wear earrings all the time. Why is this bothering me all of a sudden? Like it because you know. Like, you know, it it's just, just a dated fit. thing, right? Like that was the only part of the film that felt dated, which is like the the way that they were duding yeah. at her. And I'm like, she lived it. Don't mansplain like the science behind this is what happened to the boat. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did want to say that the the scene, I guess, where they first ever meet is when she's about to jump off the boat because Billy Zane, mm-hmm. and she can't take it anymore. And, and so Leonardo DiCaprio comes up and um, talks her down, really. But then she ends up slipping and almost falling. Mm-hmm. And then he, he pulls her back up. And then I don't, I, uh, I don't know how many days passed on the boat before they sank, but it seemed like the next day he's out there with her on the very front of the boat. And he's saying, close your eyes. And he makes her st- close your eyes and step up on the railing. And it's like, you're a re-traumatizing. <laughs> almost died by falling off. The you're ship. like, that's too soon. 
see yeah. and for me i was like that was the most romantic part like now that i'm older i'm just like oh because she's trusting him for this thing that was super scary like traumatic but she's like trusting enough to be like yeah hey, i'm gonna do it like he's not gonna do anything crazy or weird i was no i felt it more now than when i was younger. <laughs> oh, good, fine. i'll do it fine <laughs> Yeah, you know what, it was, again, you know, it was really made fun of a lot. Um, if there were memes back in the day, which there's memes about it now, but if there were memes back in the day, it would have been all over the place. Two of my favorite memes and references to this day are her <laughs> holding the heart of the ocean and, and dropping it. Like, I love that so much. And it's been 84 years. Yes. <laughs> That's a good one. Classic, classic references. Yeah. So it's she, like it's definitely been roasted to death, but it's it's still a good movie. It's in, still in the way that Romeo and Juliet, like not the film, but like the story, right? It's like these mm -hmm. two stupid kids that like got into like nonsense, and anyone who's in their right state of mind or logically thinking is just like, oh my god, why? Why are you going through all these things? But it's that heartbroken, star-crossed. You know, this is going to end badly. Story that people are just like, ah. yeah. I never thought about it like that. Yes, yeah, doomed from the start. Yeah. Some of my favorite stories are like that. And like Stephen King is my favorite author. And there's this one um, series, the, the, the Dark Tower, which I will not talk about right now because I will geek out hardcore. But one, <laughs> one of the books is um, like, you know, this main character has gone through some sad stuff. And, um, and in one of the books, he finally sits down with this group of people and he's like, I'm going to tell you like the sad story that didn't end well, like that ruined me. And he's like, I'm finally going to tell you about it. So you start with the story and it's long and boring and it's not exciting, but you just know like, wait, don't forget, like this doesn't end well. And by the time it gets to like the climax of the story, you're like, you're super involved emotionally and you're uh, like, maybe it'll be different this time. Like it's not going to end bad. Like, no, you know, it's going to end bad. <laughs> And so I, I love stories like that. And something, I mean, we knew Titanic was going to sink. We know he's going to die. We know people are all like, there is enough space for him if she just moved over. And I'm like, no, like, you know what happens. There was this moment that kind of got me, gave me chills a little bit. It was right after, it, so it was really interesting to see, pay attention to like, like you mentioned the, the time lapse. Like this all happened within a day, two days, three days. Yeah, like, a it was of really, days. really quick um but after their first like hang out where they really connected and danced and everything and the next day he's just like okay i'm hooked like i'm gonna go tell her i love her and there's this church scene and he's like hey hey dude they're in church you can't just like pull her out of church like i get that you're super into it right now but they like they kick him off or whatever and they send him away and then it goes back to them singing and the last line of that scene that they're singing all together as a group is for those in peril on the sea. And I was like, <laughs> poor shadow. Can I, can I just ask a question? Like I mentioned that I finished watching this right before I started this Zoom call. And so maybe I missed something, but does she die at the end? Like, is, is she dying? And when, and when she goes, when she's like, when she's back on the boat with him, is that her dying? Is that what happens? I, so when I watched it before, I thought maybe it was just a dream, but this time that's the vibe that I got. Yeah. Like, because you don't see, there's no obvious, like, eh, like I died moment, but she's there. She's, it's like this beautiful reconnection. He's there waiting for her at the clock. Yeah. And then there's all these people that start clapping. And I was thinking like, whatever, what if those are all the people that also died? And now they're like, they're all their way, like welcoming her. Like she's back with the group so i thought yeah. it that way this and time she'd time. let go of the heart right and then so like yeah she does make a fun <laughs> noise like, yeah um, that but that deserves I, to be made fun of <laughs> I, I, was, I was thinking in my mind this also deserved to be made fun of but when she's walking up the stairs at the end and she's back in the boat and they kiss and everybody is standing around just watching and clapping that part is absolutely insane like to to the, the amount of uh, hubris that you have to think that all these people in the boat cared about you and they're in that like, oh yeah, now we're, yes, clapping, they're kissing. It's just that part's crazy. I think that should have been empty except for them too. Um, this is nuts. I just thought it was weird. It, it gave me airplane just landed vibes. Like when people start yeah. clapping 
or like in a film at the end when it's over and there's credits and immediately i'm all like don't do that stop like not with me <laughs> do not i one time i was i was on a flight by myself and i was in the very back and uh, you know like back there like right in front of where the um, flight attendants sit in their back room and as it was landing <laughs> one of the flight attendants got on the intercom and started singing i want to rock and roll all night and party every day the kiss song why so i turned around just to see like is this really happening who's doing <laughs> this and he saw me turn around and he was like he thought i was looking at him like yeah and he went like yeah <laughs> but really i was like oh that's the crazy person singing karaoke on an airplane i was not condoning it and then after it was over we were sitting there waiting to you know waiting to get out and he started talking to me i was like Oh, y'all made best friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That's way worse than clapping when people yeah. like, just like, Ugh. anyway. Uh, I think instead of throwing the necklace away, she should have donated it to a museum. Yeah, I, I like that it was, I, I took it as a jab at them the bros because the oh, whole like do. mansplaining at her and the like we're we're in, the, in it for this gem like we're looking for this diamond and for her at the end to be like <laughs> suckers that's true okay okay she felt like, like that. it belonged to jack and jack was in the water right but here was my thing though are they not probably gonna i mean i guess the likelihood of finding it is really low but i uh, so I was thinking the same thing. Like, it's clearly a jab at the bros, but like, also they might still find it. So like, keep it, keep it forever. Bury it. I, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I just felt like, I'm like, they still got all their little gadget stuff. You never, I like that she didn't have an she has it, but. But she didn't have like an attachment to it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like she wasn't about money. It was just the world that she was in and she hated it. If anything, like she hated being a part of that world. And she, like the scene where, it cuts to this little girl that's kind of like slouched and the mom was like, no, sit up and put your napkin in your lap. And like she hated that and saw this. Mm. they're doing the same thing to that little girl. That little girl's going through, going to go through the same stuff that I did. Yeah. Um, so I, she had no attachment to that. And, and it was like a Billy Zane present. Yeah. And when every so. time Billy Zane was just like, I'll give you everything. And all you have to do is just like, you know, give me you. And she's like, ooh. Yeah. Um, ooh. And and so I was, I guess I'm surprised that she kept it because when she found it in the coat, she's like, oh, like, huh, it's there, you know? And when he presented it to her, she was like, ooh, like the first time she was like, it's kind of much, like it's heavy. She was never like, she would have oh. just sold it and like, yeah. Yeah. And, and this is where like that INFP, ENFP, like similarity thing, like, oh, I have to sell this. No, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna like put it away somewhere. I'm not gonna think about it. And yeah, like I might even forget I own it. Like I don't even know. No, I'm not. That's a lot of effort for this thing. Yeah, that sounds like a whole back thing. of a sock drawer. Yeah. Like, oh, but this is worth a lot of money. You can sell it. But who? I have, like, I'm gonna have to research where to sell it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to talk to somebody. I don't want to haggle somebody. Haggle with me. I don't want to do that. I'm just gonna put it in here, this drawer and like oh yeah there's this drawing of me 100 years later like oh yeah i've got that <laughs> <laughs> but um let's rate this movie uh, oh yes. to one to five gallons of water how many icebergs <laughs> <laughs> you uh one to five hearts of the ocean uh, <laughs> you guys, guys want to go first um, I'll go. Um, you have to give it a five. This is this is Titanic. This um, is this is a huge movie. I, I I'm I'm I give it a five. Five hearts of the ocean. Okay. Yes. Gilbert. I'll I'll give it a four, just because it's I don't know. It's not one of those that I'm going like you know what I'm gonna watch it again like this weekend. Um, <laughs> but it was it was good to watch it again after not having watched it a long time and and still enjoying it as a film and being able to see these themes that are still super relatable. Um, I, I liked it. It was, it was good to watch again. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Well, it was nice. Yeah. 
I'm also going to give it a four because like all the, the accuracy and uh, all the time, all the detail that James Cameron put into it and the actors were good. Kathy Bates bumps it up for me. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll also give it a four. The sets were great. The costumes. Yeah. All that was all that was Yeah. It was what costumes? Good. What were people even wearing then? <laughs> 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 the wigs were great. I was gonna say the wigs, or they were bad. Wigs. I don't know. <laughs> um, but look, just look up a picture of Billy Zane in Titanic and tell me he's not wearing a wig. That hairline is just too crisp. Some something about it. I don't know. <laughs> um, because then because it's at, at that dinner scene when they're all dressed up, it switches between Billy Zane and. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's reactions a lot so just back and forth right between them so you're looking at one look at the other Leo's got that natural real hair and then switches back to Billy Zane and it's just like ah, something about is it, it is it like that because it was a class thing you know what I mean like is it just the hair had to be like his was just natural and messy because so I don't put impactful. product in it you know mm -hmm. versus like I need to put all these things in my hair and colognes and perfumes and clothes or whatever I would think that except the other Billy Zane movies where he's definitely wearing a wig mm. that I've seen personally. I'm cutting out all this wig talk. This is, <laughs> episode's going to be like 10 like, minutes long. John like Michael's wig obsession. <laughs> it's its own separate podcast. Yes. <laughs> Me spotting out wigs in your favorite movies. Um, speaking of like the high def thing, I remember not noticing before the spit, the spittle, like when he was teaching her how to hock up and spit off the, the side of the boat. And like being able to see it now and be like, oh, like I'm cringing so hard because he turns around and he's talking to the mom and the mom is immediately like, uh-uh, you know, <laughs> and he's got it just on his face, like it's on his face oh. and he's saying hi to these ladies and the countess or whatever. And that's when Kathy Bates is like, dude, like you got, you got the, you know, what's, <laughs> you know, what's funny. I must have missed that part because I must have walked out of the room or something because when that part where she spits in Billy Zane's face, I was like, wow, that came out of nowhere. Also ad libs. Oh, yeah. Oh, she was. So, and Billy Zane was okay with that? So originally, so I read that she was supposed to jab with her, that butterfly pin, like she was supposed to jab at him with that. And she ad libbed the hawking and spitting in his face. It makes way more sense. Yeah. And James Cameron loved it so much that he would just like do that. Gross. <laughs> right. But, Whoa. but it was, I just thought it was such a better tie in to spit with that. For and sure. That was a good call. Nice callback. It yeah. also left the hairpin, I think, ambiguous because there's that moment where she first sees it and she's like, oh, this used to be mine. But it, there's never like a storied connection to it again in the flashbacks. Like you see her wearing it, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like, oh, this is the thing that someone gave me or this is the thing that like I used to stab someone in the face with. Yeah, this, you know? this is the thing I tried to do an attempted murder with. <laughs> I'm going to have that same sentimental value. Wow. Uh, interesting. Ugh. Other favorite That's part. <laughs> the axe, right? And he tells her to try twice like hit the same hit one spot and now try to hit the same spot when he was handcuffed oh yeah and she true. misses it by like three feet and he's like hey, it'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> and she turns around and he's like okay are you ready and he kind of hides a little bit and he shows whatever he can of the <laughs> the cuffs and then she swings and she <sighs> closes her eyes and i just i see that and i'm like <laughs> yeah yeah Girl. that might be the scariest thing in the movie <laughs> <laughs> I've never been in a sinking boat, but I have been around axes and stuff. Thanks, everybody, for listening to this very short episode. <laughs> we almost did the film. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>